Uh, yes, Bikram. Uh, Bikram, how is the how how is the voting going on? Uh, do you see everything smooth there right now? Yes, uh, was very very uh, smoothly and very fast and frequently the voting procedure is going on. We have seen from the very morning six six thirty a.m. Uh, the people were standing in the queue waiting for their turn to cast their vote. But now it's just uh, nine. Uh, it's nine, and we have seen that most of the booths are getting uh, empty with the people as because they have already cast their vote. Again, uh, in that room, uh, we have seen that the people are coming in. More than uh, 200, uh, 195 people have casted their votes so far in two and, one and a half hours, starting from 7.15 p.m. because it started from 7.15 p.m. was beat. And very smoothly and in a very fast and fluent manner, we are seeing that the casting of votes is going on. And, and we know that uh, Dhulai constituency is one of the most uh, peaceful constituency in every election. It went very peacefully, and the casting percentage is also uh, getting higher. Now, right. as it is a bipole, it will be a time to see that how much casting uh, happens in the end, we can say. But so far, we are seeing that people are coming in enthusiastically. They are uh, casting their vote, waiting for their turn in standing all in right. the queue. Was all right, all right. Uh, uh, don't go away. Uh, stand by. We'll come back to you soon, Bikram Sarkar, uh, in Barak Valley, reporting for Northeast Live, live covering these by-elections. We are joined by our reporters Arindam Das and Biplop Day from the Garo Hills. Uh, Arindam Das and Biplop, they are in Gambegri right now. Let me first go to you, uh, uh, Biplop Day. Biplop Day, if you can hear me. Biplop, uh, uh, I'm coming to you, Arindam, immediately after this. Biplop, this this is a very significant election and lot at stake for personally for Chief Minister uh, Conrad Sangma. Uh, definitely, this is definitely a very, very interesting and a prestigious uh, e election uh, for not only the uh, the NPP but uh, the entire uh, fraternity that is here. Uh, on the one side, we have Saling Sangma, who's just uh, who's just uh, recently become an MP. And he would definitely want to put uh, stamp some authority on the fact that Gambigri is a seat that he can he he and uh, people from the Congress can always win. Uh, the other other thing is that uh, the NPP this has become uh, although it's not going to really make a difference to uh, to governance, uh, we still expect uh, this go, this to be a, a, a fight for prestige because the uh, the the candidate of the NPP is the wife of the current uh, Chief Minister of Meghalaya. Uh, and the third part is the Sadia Rani Sangma has come second in the past two elections and uh, this third election is uh, something that she actually wants to change the status quo. Uh, we, as, as we've uh, already seen, uh, the fight is going to be extremely close and we expect uh, a very, very strong uh, you know, finish. Uh, we've, had, uh, we've had a few uh, model code violations that have been... Uh, we have a, we've had a few model code violations that have taken place, uh, some allegations of money being thrown. Uh, these things have uh, these things have become very interesting in the over the past uh, uh, over the past two days since uh, model code since uh, the uh, silent period has been uh, ongoing. Right, uh, Arindam, uh, Arindam, coming to you as uh, Biplav had said. Yes, we have been saying since morning this is a very very interesting uh, contest. Mehtab Chandi, NPP wife of the Chief Minister Sadia Rani Sangma of the TMC, also related to the former uh, Chief Minister and and NPC Big Gun in Meghalaya, uh, Mukul Sangma, and the T BJP is also fielded a very strong candidate, Bernard Marak, member of the Garo Hills Autonomous District Council, uh, who had also contested. Uh, last Last time as well, Jing, Jing Jang Marak. Jing Jang Marak is the Congress candidate, so multi corner contest. But I want to know from you, Arindam, where is uh, Conrad Sangma and where is Mehtap Chandi? Does Mehtap Chandi uh, has a uh, vote in Gambegri or she doesn't have a vote in Gambegri? Where, uh, uh, where, is, where does she vote usually? Well, uh, was we talking about uh, which candidate have vote in the Gambagri constituency? Only two candidates have their votes in the Gambagri constituency. One is uh, Sadhya Rani Sangma from the TMC and the other is uh, Jingjang Marak who is uh, from the Indian National Congress. Uh, the other two candidates doesn't have their votes in the Gambagri constituency. So right now we can only tell our viewers that uh, 
Chief Minister Conrad Sangma as well as his wife uh, Mehtab Chandi is at their uh, residence in uh, Tura and likewise uh, Bernard also I had a talk in this morning whether he had any plans to go out to any polling station he said he doesn't have any plans as, uh, as of now and on the other hand uh, uh, Mukul Sangma also doesn't have his uh, vote in, in this uh, constituency uh, so basically all the top leaders are uh, sitting in Tura right now they are closely observing the polling process uh, which is underway since, since 7 a.m. in the morning and uh, since 7 a.m. Uh, we have seen that people in large number have uh, come to cast their votes so looking at the early morning trend we can only say that uh, it's going to be a high voter turnout uh, but uh, as uh, Bipla was mentioning I would like to ask a few questions to him well uh, Bipla uh, if we speak about the Gambegre constituency it has been a stronghold of basically Saleng Sangma. Yes. He has won as an independent candidate, he has won as an NCP candidate, he has won as a Congress candidate. So will the individual influence work this time? Because since uh, this is going to be a multi-cornered fight. See, it's, it's a very interesting situation in the fact that uh, while Saleng Sangma has a base here and he personally almost knows everybody from uh, the constituency, the one thing that uh, could actually change people's uh, minds was, is the fact that uh, the NPP is currently in governance. So if the if uh, people actually vote on that line, then Saleng Sangma's influence, although will still continue to be there, but it, this this time it could be limited to uh, just this by-election. Okay, the NPP could actually pull through the seat, and so could uh, TMC because uh, TMC Sadiharani has had uh, very close contests with uh, co with the co former uh, what call uh, MLA of Gambigre, uh, Asaling Sangma. Uh, she only lost by about 20, 30 vote votes in 2018, and by about 2000, uh, 2300 uh, votes in 2023. Uh, the NPP has always been third in this constituency, it's, and this is something that they would really like to change. So there you have heard uh, Biplob uh, right. uh, telling us in uh, detail enough. how this uh, fight is going to be. But uh, we can only say that uh, it is going to be a four-cornered fight. Uh, right. Yes, yes. So uh, we, we will go quickly to our reporter in Bongaigao, Abhidip Chaudhary. Uh, Bongaigao is an interesting contest because the Bongaigao seat, as we have been saying, fell vacant because the sitting MLA, AGP leader Pani Bhushan Chaudhary, got elected to the Lok Sabha and therefore the Bongaigao assembly seat fell vacant. And now there is a, uh, there is a contest between Dipti Mohi Chaudhary, wife of Pani Bhushan Chaudhary of the AGP and Brajanjit Sinha of the Congress. Uh, so the BJP has left this Bangangao seat to its alliance partner that is the AGP. Uh, Avidip, uh, good morning to you. Avidip, uh, what is the scene like? Uh, uh, how many candidates are in the fray? Uh, what is the contest like? What is the turnout uh, in, in Bangangao? What are you witnessing around you? Very good morning, Wazbir. Yeah, uh, as mentioned by you, Bangangao constituency is very interesting, but but it's peaceful compared to the other constituencies where the election is going on, the by-election is going on today. Uh, here I am at Birjhora Girls HS School where the voter turnout is a bit low. Uh, we are here since 7 in the morning but the voter turnout is very low uh, as compared to the other places of Assam, other, the other four constituencies of Assam. Uh, as you can see there are not much voters standing in the queue. Uh, in the last MP election the voter turnout was 8 9% but now it's around 9.30 we have seen a very few voters coming out and standing here in the queue you can see there are only five to six voters who are there in this uh, polling station at uh, this is uh, no, uh, in the it. center of uh, Bongaigao right. town here the voter percentage is going to be very low I, I, I suppose and he, this is the place where uh, Barpeta MP Fani Bhukan Sojuri and his ca um, candidate wife Dipti Moy Sojuri has casted his uh, vote uh, this is the place where they have been casting their vote the UPPL BGP AGP Alliance candidate is casting uh, casted her vote a while back but they are quite hopeful the politicians are quite hopeful that after a around uh, 12 or so the voter turnout will increase and no, they are hoping tell that me, Avidip, around Avidip, 70 hold on, to 75 Avidip, uh, voter Avidip, percentage turnout will be there. Yeah, 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 Avidip, yeah, Avidip, is this the situation? You are saying only 5 to 6 voters are lining up in that polling station where you are at the moment. But is it the trend across the constituency or this is the trend only in that polling station where you are located at this point? 
uh, right as we this is the train across all the polling stations of Bongaigao town i want to repeat this is the uh, train across the polling station in Bongaigao town but in rural areas in village areas people are coming out in huge number because they have their other daily course to maintain and they need to go to their field they need to go to their farm they need to do their household chores and that's why the people of the rural area they have come out in huge number to cast their vote uh, we have a very young voter today with us who has casted his vote and he is the son of the Pima Sodori and Foni Bukon Sodori. Uh, you are a young voter, you have come to vote. But we are seeing that there is very low voting percentage. People are not coming out yet out of their home. What is your appeal as a, a young uh, voter? Yeah, generally, we see that in general election, the people, every people come and cast their vote. But uh, in this case of by-election, uh, we know that people like they are not completely aware but I request people and I appeal people that uh, all the people should come and cast their vote because uh, for the development of the constituency they should come because uh, all the people are responsible for the development of this constituency. So for the sake of the development of Bongaigao, people should come out and cast their vote. That is what the appeal from a young voter and the son of Foni Bukon Sodhuri and Dipti Moi Sodhuri. But we are hopeful, the political leaders are hopeful, the district administration is hopeful as the days uh, pass on, as the days pass by. Uh, it's only 9.30 now and we all are hopeful was be that the polling but percentage will increase at the end this is, this of the day is, by 5 is, yeah, this is something which is in sharp contrast to what we are witnessing in uh, the other constituencies in Assam as well as in Meghalaya. There is brisk turnout of voters and you are saying in the entire Bongangao town, uh, the, all the polling stations, there are very few turnout uh, as far as, uh, 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 as of now. So that is, uh, what does it signify? Uh, does it mean anything? And there were some reports uh, when Diptimoy Chaudhary uh, was named a candidate by the AGP. Uh, there were a lot of reports that, uh, you know, uh, not everybody was upbeat. Uh, so uh, what do you have to say? What are you picking up from the ground? My assessment of the situation of the voter, low voter turnout is that uh, as because many people, uh, they stay outside of Bongaigao town because of uh, work and other related purpose and as because Bongaigao and other four constituencies has only declared local holiday and as because the other people in the, you know, working in the other states and other cities, other big cities, they don't get, uh, get their leave um, uh, might be is one of the reasons why the voter turnout is low. And another probability is that that during the MP election where, where the voter turnout was around 89 percent people are saying that they had to wait in the queue for long hours when they came to cast their vote during the MP election that might be a reason that what people might be thinking sitting out there in their home watching live telecast in Northeast Live and other uh, channels that if the voter turnout is high in the in the first hours and they uh, want to avoid the long queues and that might be the reason the psychological reason uh, behind the voter low voter turnout in this um, in the in this hours and as the days uh, pass by as the uh, time passes on uh, we, we hope that the voter turnout will increase but another one uh, thing which the young voter uh, rightly mentioned that uh, there is a bit of lack of awareness among voters because this is a by election right. and uh, people might uh, think that uh, there is no point of going and leaving the work and casting their vote because all right, it's not all going right, to all make right, Abhidip, much impact to the government or uh, to, the, to, the, to the voter of Boeing. That's what maybe another reason was. Be. Right, right, uh, right, Abhidip. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. With